Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson with Nixine Publishing here in the United States. And we're continuing a series with Adrian Nixon coming to us from Yorkshire, England, uh, focused on the graphene world. Hi, Adrian, how are you today? I'm great, Debbie, thank you. Good to see you again. Great to see you too. So today we're gonna to do something just a little bit different. Um, I had the pleasure of, of speaking with Dr. James Tour recently and we're gonna talk with you about his exciting discovery that he has called Flash Graphene. He's so, a smart guy, isn't he? And a very nice guy as well. He is, he's one of the leading researchers in the yeah. world and uh, he, he gave us a little bit of his time, which was fantastic. So Adrian, can you show us your slide? So Dr. Tour is um, a very well-known uh, professor at Rice University. He has numerous graphene-related patents and has spin-off businesses. And included in that is one called Universal Matter, which is handling the scaling up of this new way to form graphene, which is called flash graphene. It's something completely different than anything that you've seen before. So I have and a chance you got to talk, yeah, you got to talk to James and interview him, didn't you, about this? Yes, I did. In fact, he, um, he had a very brief amount of time. I was able to ask a few questions, listen intently, and take about four pages of notes. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me, yeah. There's a tsunami of information that comes from him. That's a great description and uh, fascinating stuff. I think I think you're really going to enjoy this. Yeah. And then, as a result of that, I mean, we wrote up your um, interview as a special feature in, uh, actually, this uh, current issue of uh, the journal. But then some other people picked up on this, didn't they? So it's wonderful. The, In fact, the article from Forbes, has, the, with Adrian's quotes in it, has picked up over 30,000 views, hasn't it, Adrian? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, and if any of the readers uh, want to have a look at this, then just type in Graphene and Forbes, and that should come up right at the top of Google. It's only a few weeks old. Yeah, it's, it's a brand new... Yeah. <laughs> Tell us how graph Flash Graphene's made, Debbie. Yes, so Flash Graphene. All right, so here's my understanding of Flash Graphene. Now... Uh, the emphasis, of course, um, from Dr. Tour is waste plastic because we all know how much plastic has become such an enemy, um, creating so much litter and problems in, in all around the world. So what he's done is he's taken any waste plastic, any carbon source as well, and with the plastic, you don't have to wash it, you don't have to sort it or anything. You subject it to these, this 200 volt electric pulse. He started out with laser and now he's doing this electric pulse that heats the carbon to 3000 degrees centigrade. Blast everything apart <laughs> down to an atomic scale. And what you're left with, amazingly enough, is graphene powder. So he's calling it upcycling because we're not recycling the plastic, we're upcycling it, which creates a product that has even more value than the original product. That's a really good point. Yeah, the, the graphene that comes out of this is a special type of graphene called turbostratic. Do you mind if I just take over and talk a little bit about that, Debbie? Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, so normal graphene is uh, made from, it's called, uh, made from graphite is AB stacked. So it stacks up when one layer, um, the, the carbon atom one layer is over the hull in the ring of the layer below, if that makes sense. And they regularly align these layers, and that's quite a strong way for the graphene layers to be held together. Because you'll remember that um, graphene is to graphite as a playing card is to a deck of cards. So what you want to do is you want these individual cards to come out of the deck easily. And the, the more strongly they're held together, the harder it is to do. Now, what James Tour's team has done, they, their graphene that comes out um, is what's called turbostratic. We, now, it's a very subtle change. It just means that one layer is slightly misaligned relative to the lower one, or the lower one. So you get few layer graphene. And this misalignment makes them less strongly held together. And what that means is when you come to mix the graphene into polymer composites, let's say, which is the biggest application at the moment, then the layers split apart and mix better in with the polymer. So because it's mixed better, then you should end up with a much better performing composite. So it, it's technically better graphene, uh, as well as environmentally friendly as well. It's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, it really is. And I, I heard it described as pristine graphene. Uh, yeah, it is. In I'll just stop sharing so we can come back and talk again. Pristine in the sense that uh, the carbon uh, from waste plastic or ever, ever anything, the carbon atoms have all been pulled apart 
and then when they come back together again then they just form as pure carbon and they like to form the most stable shape that they can which turns out to be graphene so the graphene spontaneously forms in small bits and that's why it's pristine well oh, well it's it's an exciting technology yeah. and um and there's there's even more information about it so we we've, we've got that in an article that will be coming out later so for those of you who are subscribers you can enjoy that if you're not let us know so thanks for talking with us today adrian about um, about flash graphene can, can you kind of recap it for us it's sure yeah um, yep yeah. so the uh, the upshot is Flash graphene, you can make graphene from waste. So you can take waste material, plastic, anything containing carbon, put it into this special machine, zap it, out comes graphene at the other end, which is a much higher value product than what went in at the beginning. This is going to be environmentally friendly. You can recycle all sorts of things. And as you said, Debbie, you can upcycle rather than recycle. Fantastic yeah. stuff. So once James starts to get this commercialized with that company you were just telling us about, then this will start being scaled up. We know that some very big companies are paying attention to this already. So this one's going to take off and be another one of those things to watch in the future. Yeah, we've, we've actually heard that Ford and uh, NASA are interested in this particular yes. technology. So, all right, stay tuned. And uh, th thank you for your time and, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for your time. <laughs>